Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Getting Employees Comfortable on Camera. We're very excited for this and think there's going to be a lot to take away from this discussion. Uh, we have a great guest joining our CEO. Uh, I'm just going to wait here and give some time for people to keep trickling in. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to attach your LinkedIn profile in the chat or give a shout out to where you're joining us from. I think we have a wide range of kind of geographic locations people are going to be connecting in today. So it could be pretty interesting uh, seeing where everybody's from. Uh, while we are waiting, I will give you guys an intro uh, for both our guests, Nat and CEO, Maury. So Nat Swire, who will be joining us today, graduated from Johns Hopkins University with a bachelor's degree in film and media studies. He then went on to attend Academy Performing Arts in Prague. He has worked for Sideswipe Media as their head video producer, writing, directing, and editing sketch comedy, web series, music videos, and all promotional content for Hatched at NYC. He's written and directed over a dozen sketch comedy episodes, some of which have been featured in New York's Always Happy Comedy Bot. He's directed and produced a short film called Green Shields that was an official selection at the Art of Brooklyn Film Festival and the Greenpoint Film Festival. Uh, his video library is truly diverse, ranging from comedy shorts to informational web series and even documentaries, one notably being a multimedia journalism project about the lives of seven-year-old children in Baltimore. He has a wall of experience being in front of the camera and behind it, working with both professional actors and amateurs with no experience on film. Very excited to have him here today. He's going to have some great stories for you. and some really good insight into how you can get people comfortable on camera. Maury uh, is going to be joining him to dive into this topic. She is the CEO of SparkSart. She began her career at Procter & Gamble and later Pepsi in their marketing departments. While working at both companies, she recognized an inconsistency in how products are marketed compared to open jobs. When marketing for a product, she managed big campaigns with eye-catching collateral. But when she needed a new person on her team, HR marketed the role with a plain text-based job description. This inspired her to create SparkStart to give recruiters the same powerful tools that marketers have. SparkStart makes it easy to create employee-generated video to enhance job descriptions and build your employer brand. Welcome, Nat and Maury. I'm going to turn it over now to Maury and bring her on screen. Maury can come up and join me. I see here we have a couple of people joining us from London. That's awesome. One from New Jersey. Very nice. Hello, Maury. How are we doing? Good. How you doing? Doing well. Good. Very excited for this conversation today. I think there, there's a lot really here to dig into. Yeah, we're we're excited as well. As soon as Nat joins us on screen, we'll we'll get started because it it's it's fun to have someone who has training in this and and given that Nat's also done documentaries, you know, he, he he's worked with folks who are clueless, um, as are most employees. <laughs> so I was going to do. Exactly. Hey Nat. Hey, how how's it going? <laughs> Right. Okay, so thanks, Jake. Welcome, Nat, and, and everyone. Um, we'll say as we're going along, if you have comments, please feel free to to jump in the chat. If you have questions, add those too, and we'll we'll try to deal with them as much as we go. Or if not, we'll leave some time at the end um, there. So, Nat, let me start off. The, the the folks that we're talking to all day long um, generally are heads of employer brand or recruiting. And they want the authenticity of video of their employees, you know, giving videos and, and just, it's just talking to candidates, particularly with all the remote processes going on. Um, putting a human face and a human voice back into the recruiting process is really important. But there's a reality that employees are not professional actors um, and a lot of them get nervous on camera or they clam up or they're hesitant to do it. So what we want to talk to you about today is, um, you know, how do you get people to relax and really just be authentic and genuine and, and just talk to people. That's the, the real key to it. Just, you know, tell people what the deal is, what the job involves, what it's all like. Um, but particularly given that you've done documentaries and, and worked with, with non-professional actors, um, have you had situations where you've had somebody that, you know, was nervous and really not ready to go? Um, is, has this been part of your world? Absolutely. It's, it's a constant. I mean, even, even professional actors, 
um, need a little bit of coaxing and warm up sometimes because it's it's scary. Someone sticking a camera right in your face. Um, there's a tendency to clam up. Um, I, I would say one of the worst uh, experiences I've had was during the pandemic when uh, actors weren't readily available. You know, you you physically couldn't get whoever you wanted into a room. Um, so I had to do a project um, with, you know, and I had to use a few friends in there. Um, I was doing a project um, kind of about COVID during COVID. Um, and I actually had a friend of mine just play a very small role as a, uh, a bike delivery messenger, uh, just delivering some food, very simple lines. Here's your food three words um and he he could not do it he simply could not do it um, every time we would say action the words would would come out wrong they would he would he would look off he'd look at me look at the camera just completely freezing up like a deer in headlights um and basically what we had to do is is get rid of all the kind of pomp and circumstance around it i you know i wouldn't say action that can be a very scary thing. Go, action. Suddenly you freeze up. Um, so we just kind of rolled the camera Oops. and, oh, sorry, you got me? You, you froze for a second. <laughs> right, right, of course. Yeah. Um, and, we, you know, we basically just had to get him talking, get him comfortable with something he already knew. We asked him about his day a little bit, completely ignored the camera, just hit record. You know, we don't, we're lucky these days you don't have to worry about wasting film you can kind of just let the camera roll um and you know take after take it, it took a while and that is absolutely okay um you know i think one of the most important things to kind of accept is you are going to mess up um uh, this isn't this isn't live theater it's not even it's, it wouldn't even be a live a live zoom cast um, it, it's okay to kind of stumble through everything. You only need to get it right just one time. Yeah, I like to say it's easier than real life because if you mess up, you can delete it. It's know, the don't, best. We, don't we wish we could all do that? Yeah. Like, oh, that was stupid. Let me just delete. Let me, let me exactly. Go yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it, but you've also been through acting school. You've been, you know, trained on the other side mm. of the camera. What do they teach you in acting school about, you know, giving your, your best performance and, and letting it all come through well? Sure. Um, I think the biggest thing, and it's the biggest thing because it can be the hardest thing, is just getting out of your own head. Um, whenever we feel like we're performing, there's, you know, there's a lot of self-analysis that suddenly takes place things you wouldn't normally think about suddenly you're consumed by what are what are you doing with your hands like even right now for everybody watching what what are you doing with your hands you, it's suddenly you start thinking what am i doing are do i look do i look normal are they down by my side are they you know you, you start getting very conscious yeah. of your own of your own body and what you're doing <laughs> especially if you think people are going to see it um so very kind of basic things like getting moving around getting the blood flowing a little bit one thing i always like to do um, if people are kind of struggling with um, with them with emoting with being kind of over stiff is just get up move around do some jumping jacks uh drink some water that is honestly one of the some of the most basic things are the things people forget drink water i, I got water right here have some snacks don't go in on an empty stomach just, just kind of get the blood flowing a little bit. And, uh, you know, going off that, just, just start talking. It's not, it, it's not the, everything you say doesn't have to be the most profound thing in the world. Getting people talking about something that they know very well, something they're passionate about, whether it's, you know, I've, I've worked with, uh, Jake brought up the um, the project with the seven year olds in in Baltimore, um, and that was a fun because we could just kind of start asking them about things they're into, baseball, Pokemon. Suddenly, they they people just kind of light up when they talk about something they're passionate about, and then you can kind of ease into what you actually want to talk about, and that flow becomes very natural. And one of the things that we've found too, and that I've always been taught, is when you get someone talking 
you disrupt that loop in their head of, oh my God, I'm going to look stupid. Everybody's going to laugh kind of thing. But the other thing is when you talk, you have to breathe and mm -hmm. it gets people breathing normally. So that's the other pieces so they get nervous and they get tight when in breathing obviously calms you down. So when you have to take a breath in so that you can speak going out, um, that helps too. So yeah, we, we found, um, that can really help. So let's just about what are the things other than the, the, the hyper, you know, consciousness of what are my hands doing and all of that? What are the things that make people nervous about this? Like what are the core parts of, you know, the things that, that make people freeze or, or just not want to be part of video? Sure. Um, I, I think it really, comes down to people not wanting to look foolish, especially in front of strangers. Um, and one, one of the great things with video is kind of what we talked about earlier is you, you won't look foolish because you have total control. Mm -hmm. I think letting, letting your subject know that if, if they don't like it, they can watch it later. If they don't like that one, they'll use a different one. That's um, yep. And, you know, an, another important thing going off of that is who, who you have in the room with them uh, at the time. You, you don't want a, a total stranger because, you know, you, you get that reaction. Whoever's behind the camera, suddenly you don't want to look foolish in front of them. So getting, getting to know the subject a little bit uh, can be very powerful. But on the other hand, you also maybe don't want their best friends in there. You know, if you're working in an office and you have three of your friends kind of you know, hovering around watching like, oh, John's on camera, or Alice is on camera. Suddenly that you don't want to look foolish in front of them either. So it's kind of it's kind of a balancing act. Um, and you don't want a big crowd. You know, that's yeah. something on major film sets that people have to get used to hundreds of people watching them. But it's, if it's just you and one other person with an iPhone. That's great. And, you know, getting rid of you don't need big lights. You don't need a big camera don't need a big microphone in their face you know we're not making titanic here um so kind of uh toning down the the production zoo around people can be can yeah it, be it's powerful. one of the things that make you know informal video really powerful is that it does relax mm -hmm. people you can always tell i mean production values are obviously better when you do full production um but mm -hmm. there's a there's a there's a, a feel to it that's not the same. It, it's mm -hmm. sort of like you and I are just sitting here talking, right? There's no big sound studio. There, you know, we don't have multiple mm -hmm. camera angles, all that kind of thing. Um, and you understand it's just a conversation. Mm -hmm. When that gets through to recruiting video, it's actually really powerful, um, really powerful. But but to your point about you know not having everybody's best friend or, or closest coworker, um, I do a lot of public speaking, and I'm mm -hmm. fine talking to a couple hundred people, but if like my husband's in the audience, yeah. I'm a wreck. <laughs> it's sort of when there's family yeah, yeah, yeah. there, people you know well, it's like, oh no, because this one's going to live with me. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. There's no escaping that. Yeah. Um, and and one of the things that we found, because um, you know, we've got more than 10,000 videos uploaded to the Sparks Art system, right? So we, we see it. Some of them are painful. Um, and... <laughs> And I think part of the, the painful ones actually are when people write a script and read it. Mm -hmm. That's just death. Oh, it's awful. Um, it, it's a little bit about being overprepared, that they're so mm -hmm. afraid they're not going to be able to say something. But when you read a script and you're not an actor, it can sound like this. And it, it, mm -hmm. it's just, just awful. But what about the flip side? When, when somebody comes in, you know, kind of underprepared and does the deer in headlights piece? How do you get mm -hmm. them going again? Well, I, I like what you said about there's underprepared and there's overprepared, and it's kind of about finding that middle. And one of the biggest problems with writing a script um, is we don't speak the way we write. Yeah. Certain sentence constructions on paper look great, but um, when, when they come out of our mouths it can sound very stilted you know we're putting weird pauses in certain places we we don't talk how we write um but on the other hand <clears throat> going in with absolutely nothing you get a lot of uhs and ums and kind of people figuring out on the fly <clears throat> where they're trying to go and 
that does not make for a great video, especially when we're not doing complex editing. You know, in a film, you can you can cut that stuff out with different camera angles and you can kind of cut out the fat. <clears throat> but in a kind of single video straight to camera, you want some direction of where you're going. And I find the best way to do that is just talk it out beforehand. Just have an idea of where you want to start and where you want to end. And, you know, you then you'll you'll fill in the middle. And it takes time. Again, I want to emphasize that you're probably not going to get it right the first time or the second time or even the third time set aside an hour and it'll you'll it'll start to flow you'll yeah. you'll start to figure it out even if it feels like you're not yeah I, I promise you you will it takes time it takes professionals you know we've all heard those stories of stanley kubrick demanding a hundred takes and these are the best in the world so yeah, we, you know. we, we find with employees making videos the thing they have the hardest time doing is figuring out how to end the video and get out of it, especially if they're filming themselves. They they don't want to say goodbye. They just they don't know quite how to bring it to a close. So they keep talking. And so what you know was hopefully a very short, you know, just a little clip that they were going to share with somebody. All of a sudden you've got this long rambling sort of thing. So, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we find that giving people a structure, you know, sort of start with hi, my name is, you know, and then whatever you're giving and then tell them how to end it. You know, for, for recruiting videos, it's generally, you know, end with a call to action. Please apply, you know, check out our opportunities, go, you know, see what we've got available on our website, whatever it is you want mm -hmm. them to do next. But giving them some kind of closure is huge because they know their names and they know how to start it. Now they've just got a couple sentences in the middle and yeah. <laughs> and they've got their clothes. So, so they're good on that. So yeah, structure rather whenever, you know, we, we really recommend not giving people scripts or the other mm -hmm. things that happen in, when you've got employer brand is they've got their EVP and we say, Oh, we want you to touch on these three things. And that really confines the person to talk about something that may not be the most important thing in their job or what they want to talk about. And if you've got your EVP, right, Mm -hmm. your, your people are going to talk about it. So that's a piece. Um, the, the other thing that I find that, that you may see as well when you're, you're dealing with known professionals is if the person doesn't know, if they haven't seen similar work and they don't know what's expected of them. Mm -hmm. I think some employees are afraid they're going to be way over the top and, you know, they're going to look foolish there or mm -hmm. They're going to be so quiet and still they're going to look completely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, so we find sharing, you know, get a couple good examples and sharing that with them ahead of time um, really makes a big difference in terms of them understanding, oh, OK, this is just a kind of conversational, you know, let, let's get a few things going here um, mm -hmm. that work well. Um, other things that you found that, that kind of help with that? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, I think. I, I think people are worried, like you said, they're going to be robotic or over the top. People who aren't actors tend to be over the top. Um, actors can be kind of unbearable. They're, they're very big and we're often telling people to tone it down. Um, I think with, I think with, you know, regular people, non-actors um, or non-performers, the tendency does seem, seem to be, um, a little robotic at times because there's that worry of kind of seeming like foolish or over the top. Um, so for those people who tend to be kind of monotone, um, getting them speaking is a big one. Just starting a conversation, having them ask you questions can be a great one because asking a question automatically kind of changes your inflection. You go up at the end. How are you doing? Anything to kind of modulate the voice a little bit um, humming, singing, um, something that they know will not end up being in the video, uh, tell a joke, anything like that. Laughter is great. And, and things like that can be great because they know it's not going to be in the video. The, the, the final product is not going to have you singing a song. Um, and that, and that can we get hope. people, we, I mean, I don't know what certain jobs out there, maybe you might want a little bit. Uh, um, a little bit of vocal talent, but um, uh, getting the conversation going, voice modulation, what I mentioned earlier about just moving around can get people to really relax. 
even just kind of moving around in their chair and getting people in a comfortable space is is huge at that at their desk um it, at the conference room couch standing up can be great um sometimes when people sit they get a little couch locked um and just making sure that it's it's in an in an, an environment where they're comfortable and it's not it doesn't feel like a studio yeah yeah but we, i mean we've seen people want to go into a conference room and shut the door and they stand against a blank wall oh, yeah. um <laughs> which is really kind of weird. one of the best videos we saw uploaded um actually came from a professional chef um who, who was recruiting you know for, mm -hmm. for the 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 restaurant um and filmed it in the kitchen with all the din and it was mm -hmm. wonderful because you could still hear them but you got the the energy and the sense and for anybody who wanted to be a chef that was their world um so one of the things we find with particularly informal video is people try too hard to either make it perfect or have it silent behind you know sometimes having people walk behind the, the person mm -hmm. just shows activity and, and energy um you know if you're doing healthcare, you've got to be careful they're not patients behind that are visible and that kind of stuff but in in most office settings you know that that's um an easy thing um, and what about now with people working from home? Um, any thoughts there? You know, we, we've got some concern about, gee, am I really going to film this, you know, in my living room and so forth? Um, <laughs> thoughts about how, how do you help them get over that? How do you help them, you know, feel comfortable? They're going to they're going to film themselves because you're not obviously sending uh, in a crew. Um, how do you get them comfortable doing that well? Sure. So, I mean, filming yourself can actually be great. Um, there's not a lot of pressure when it's just you. And one of the biggest things is you can't see yourself when, when you're filming yourself or generally on an iPhone. One of, one of the worst things you can do uh, when recording is be looking at yourself, which is funny because I'm actually looking at myself right now. <laughs> and it's, um, it's very distracting. Um, so um, I, I think it can be an asset. You're, you're comfortable in your home. Um, I'm in my apartment right now. My place is a mess, but you guys can't tell because you <laughs> you you put the phone um, or the laptop or whatever you're recording on um, in a you know in a strategic place. Um, I think one of the biggest things with people at their apartment um, is kind of do it in natural light. Let the light come in the window, um, and 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 don't overthink it. You know, this is you're always gonna. Um, you're always going to think what you're doing is a little worse, a little more embarrassing than it actually is. And the same goes from filming from home, from your apartment. You know, we've gotten, I, I think most people have kind of gotten used to their apartment set up at home with, with working from home. And I think treating it like it's any other day, and, you know, you're not, it's, it's no different. You're not doing anything. Yeah. And this gets to um, one of the things in, in the pre-call we were talking about, just giving people positive reinforcement is really helpful. But if you jump on a Zoom call with them earlier and just take a look at their background and go, yeah, that looks great. Or, gee, you've got, you know, a closet door open kind of thing. Or, I mean, one of the things we recommend people do is put your laptop up on some books so you're looking eye to eye with the camera rather sure. than, you know, the camera coming up and you're getting all the ceiling kind of thing. But if you can prep people that way, just so they feel confident about it, background mm -hmm. looks great. You know, the level is great. Eyes great. Um, you know, we, we joke about with models, you know, oh, the camera loves you, baby. You look yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. You look gorgeous. <laughs> you know, but, but that's true, right? I mean, people absolutely. do respond when you tell them they're gorgeous. <laughs> oh, absolutely. People light up. And, and I think they find that once, once you do it once, it becomes easier to do it again. Um, the, the camera can be very scary, but... It can also be very fun. You know, certain people absolutely love to get in front of the camera. And I think once you see yourself do it successfully once, it's kind of a thrill. Yeah, it, it is great fun. The, the other piece that I think um, kind of our, our audience struggles with um, is we have this idea of what an employee generated video should be like in terms of energy and so forth. And I hear all the time, Oh God, we could never put Fred on camera. Like, oh, can you imagine? Oh, never, never. Um, <laughs> and but one of the things that happens is people recognize their own tribe. Um, you know, if you're filming a salesperson, mm -hmm. they're probably going to be a little more outgoing, a little more higher energy kind of thing than when some of your developers, who may not be, you know, big personalities, 
but are the kinds of folks that other developers have worked with, you know, went to school with, have around mm -hmm. them now, um, that, that I think sometimes we try to push too much toward our idea of what a coworker ought to be like sure. and not understand that the folks at internal audit may be a little lower key than the folks that are doing product development. Um, and I think that's hard for the, the people that are approving the videos and, and putting it all together to understand it's okay if you've got a big range, you know, mm -hmm. it, that's, if you're being honest of, of who out, who's out there, that's a way to do it. Um, but what happens when you get a friend who is just the <laughs> smallest personality ever? <laughs> uh, I mean, get, get Fred is into something. Fred is passionate about something. Um, always i've i've never met a person who cannot talk at length about something that they're passionate about um getting them going it's it's it can be tough and that's why again it's good to have someone who who, who knows them a little bit um and can kind of get them speaking about um again anything get them speaking about what whatever a, a, you know a nerd you know a, a, a nerdy kind of passion of theirs um, or movies or um, sports I, yeah, I, food. Sports yeah. is a great one. I have, I have a friend who's finishing law school who I, I put on camera about a year ago and I, and I just got her talking about torts. <laughs> I was God. like, All right, okay. But you know, she could speak at great length about it. And suddenly she was, she was very relaxed and, and letting people know that it's, it's okay not to be big. You know, you, you mentioned that, earlier people you don't want to scare people off you know <laughs> someone who's applying for a certain position sees you know a, a a super buoyant kind of excitable person and and they might go oh, i don't know that's that's a, it's a bit much mm -hmm. um so you you want to be real and and if and if fred kind of can't you know get bigger that's sometimes that's okay sometimes people are just seeing these and they just kind of want want the information and um as long as fred is comfortable that all mm. people will be able to see that even if they even if they don't realize that they're realizing it um it'll it'll come through yeah yeah they're, they're, we we try to use the word you know authenticity and and credibility mm. because they're so overused but the reality is that's what informal video does for you. It gives you credibility and there is authenticity to mm -hmm. it because people are being their authentic selves. Um, and, mm -hmm. and when you try to direct them out of that or manage them out of that, um, your, your results don't come out as, as good. So it's, it's a matter of not being afraid of letting people be themselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, sorry, lots of people. Yeah, um, people can always we're... tell when, when you're not being authentic, whether, whether it's a performance um, or, you know, in a documentary, there's just we 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 have this very good sixth sense. We see it in politics a lot, <laughs> where <laughs> you, you know they go, I don't think this person really means what they're saying. I, I think there's a performance being put on here a little bit. Correct. Uh, well, I'm watching time, um, and Jake, I'm going to ask you to to pop back in. Have we had any questions that um, anyone's asked in the the question piece? No, we have not had. Oh, here we go. We have one. Um, hi, Nat. Can you speak a little more to people being too big? And this one comes from Ed in the chat. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's it speaks to what we were just talking about, where there's a tendency when when you're too big to seem a little a little fake. I think especially when people are talking about their jobs sometimes it can seem a little like someone's putting them up to this you know i think when when it's it's over the top and you you get this all, all the time with actors especially people who are trained for the theater they're being huge and and grand with these with these gestures that just aren't aren't really there in real life very few people unless you really are you know a genuinely exuberant happy person um then then that'll come through but especially with video you know we're we're, we're so close we, we can see your face kind of every little every little facial movement every little smile will 
can convey a point. So it's it's just unnecessary sometimes to be too grand with your with your performing and your gestures. It seems a little. I think it can seem a little phony sometimes. Yeah, and we find one of the things that that you know, kind of non-professional actors, I find that if you do too many takes, they lose energy and, and they start to to just go flat on you, mm -hmm. um, which is something to be mindful of if you've got somebody who's kind of low key to begin with. But if you've got somebody who's too big, just keep doing it until you tire them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just wear them down. Eventually. They're just sick of you. Yeah. <laughs> They'll just deliver it to get on to their day. So yeah, it's easy yeah, to do. It can happen. It's a war of attrition. Uh, that's great. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we have thank you. one more. Uh, we have one more question, Kevin, uh, if we want to go a little bit over. Um, so we have a question asking employees to record a video at home. What is the best, best process to do so? Send them an interview guide or be there virtually while filming? I think, and maybe I'm maybe I'm a control freak, but I, I think it's always better to be there um, as as a guide. Um, no one, when it's just you, I, I think people have a tendency to kind of a feel a little uneasy and b go on some tangents. I think if there's a, a calming presence there to kind of bring people back to the point, and also like Maury was saying earlier, for positive reinforcement no one in the world doesn't nobody nobody doesn't want positive reinforcement and double negative but um it, it always it's it's just great to have someone there kind of saying you're doing you're doing a great job maybe you stumbled right there take that one again um it's good to have a director yeah, and, and i think people feel a little less weird there's something about talking to a machine especially when there's not a person on the other side that just feels uncomfortable like we're, we're talking to a machine so mm -hmm. even if there's just somebody who's on a zoom call i mean we've done this where we've had people record themselves on their phones but we're kind of watching to the side through a zoom call um and that helps and also you can just kind of keep them going like that was a great take can you do it one more time and you know just talk about this aspect of your job or can you do it? that was terrific can you do one <clears> more <throat> just like that but you know yeah. kind of end it sooner kind of thing um that helps when there's another person there it feels more like a team effort definitely Absolutely. yeah definitely um so we got two more any advice <laughs> on choosing background slash location and lighting um, <clears throat> background, um, pretty much anything besides a white wall, um, <laughs> or a sign. Even, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, e a, a white wall seems like you're in a void. Um, even what, even Jake, what you, what you have right now is great. Just be some stuff on the wall. Um, yeah. you know, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be distracting. That's, that's pretty much the only thing. If people are, are going, what's, what's that on the background? Like, are, are those clothes on the bed or is that a you know a, a strange poster or um or like i said why is it so blank it looks like they're in a uh you know in some sort of matrix limbo void um only thing is not di not distracting and i'll tell you if if you are on site capturing as much of the work environment is mm -hmm. huge especially if people are not coming in for in-person interviews um just kind of seeing don't be afraid of activity don't be afraid of people walking around don't be afraid of you know oh I've, and don't let people clean up their desks we see so many people you know at a conference room table where there's not a sheet of paper on it you know or there's one coffee mug that kind of thing really detracts from the authenticity it's like when people have as long as you know there's nothing proprietary on a desk or something show the messy desk people are they're working they've got papers they've got coffee cups they've got all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. don't let them clean it up um it really does add to the idea that that somebody just pick their head up in the middle of the day and, are, and they're going to talk to you about what they're doing um when you stage it too much and over clean mm -hmm. it you over sanitize it you lose some of that you know yeah there's a mm -hmm. starbucks cup there yeah there's always a starbucks yeah. cup on their desk you know <laughs> it's just part of the deal yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a great piece totally. of authenticity. Um, and yeah. and in terms of light, nothing. Little daylight coming in, 
no, just don't have a light shooting straight up or straight down. That's 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 pretty much it. Yeah. And and don't stand in front of a window. Um, you know, people end up silhouetted because it's so much brighter outside. But natural light is so much more flattering than fluorescent mm -hmm. light if you're in an, an office. Mm -hmm. So if you know they stand and face the window, then you're going to pick up the the work environment behind them, and you're going to get all the natural light to light their faces. Um, so that can help too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so last one. What is the best practice for asking for employee volunteers? Sometimes it can feel like pulling teeth, or it seems like this one's a little skewed towards you. Yeah, um, <laughs> there, I mean, lots of things that, that we do when we launch Amplifier Spark. Some of it is getting a senior person to make a video um, and then showing it to say, you know, this is what management is doing. You know, this is this is what our leaders are doing. You know, so you, you set the expectation that, um, you know, people that you're proud of in the organization, people you want to represent you. So it becomes a little bit of an honor. Um, sometimes you can ask um, like a hiring manager if they would nominate somebody on their team to make a video. Then it becomes you've been selected and it's a, a positive piece. Um, or if you're talking about just a hiring manager, Video is so much more powerful in attracting candidates. If you go to them and go, look, we recruited for this job and we had a hiring manager video and here are our results. You know, we're going to go recruit for your job and we've got this text only job description. We can either do it with a video or we can do it without, but here's the difference. Um, so that's really powerful because people need a fully staffed team. You, you never meet your objectives if you're, you're short staffed. Um, so th there are lots of different tricks, you know, sort of socializing the, the videos you've already got so people see their peers doing it and they kind of get over it. It's kind of like, oh, you know, heck, Jake can make a video. How hard can it be? You know, it's sort of, you, you see your, your coworkers and so forth doing it and you go, I, I could do that. Um, so that's an easy thing to do. Awesome. Great. I think that's pretty much it. We're a little bit over on time, but I think that's okay. There was a, a really great discussion between you. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us one more time. And thank you, Nat and Maury, for engaging in this great conversation. I think a lot of people are going to find it very informative. Uh, kind of Thanks, going off of that, no problem. Uh, we will be sending around this uh, the recording after this. Um, so if you want to keep an eye out on your emails for that, um, we're going to send that to you. And lastly, just want to say one more time, if you don't have a product for you and your team that will allow you to easily capture and share video content, and check out the Sparkstar platform. There's the simple, secure, and scalable video platform that can handle all your employer branding and recruitment marketing video needs. Schedule a demo with us today, and thank you for joining, everybody. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm.